will be examining osmoregularity strategies in estuarine environments. These animals must possess physiological mechanisms for dealing with large fluctuations in salinity on a 24-hour basis. Right. Well, two main methods for osmoregulation in organisms are or can be demonstrated by this graph. have salinity in the organism on your y-axis and salinity of the environment on your x. So this, this, the strategy represented by the diagonal line is the osmoconforming strategy and that's where the organism changes its body fluid salinity to represent that of the environment. Here you have uh, an osmoregulator. Now this actively maintains its, its uh, body, body fluid salinity to just whatever the environment salt levels are. Now in actuality, reality, most organisms follow a, follow a curve that would, would look some, something like that, where they osmoconform in the more extreme salt environments and osmoregulate in a more comfortable range. Um, to do this experiment, we've kept uh, animals in tanks. It's a range of salinities for uh, several weeks and collected their extracellular fluids. Um, for example, we have a crab extracellular fluid for our, kept from 125% seawater concentration and extracellular fluid from a flounder at 75% seawater concentration. Um, so these animals will have been employing whatever osmoregulatory strategies are at their disposal. Um, you will measure the salinity of the fluids in these tubes and uh, produce a graph of the salinity of body fluids against uh, tank salinity, uh, i.e. the environmental salinity. And to measure the salinity of body fluids, you'll need to use a calibrated flame photometer. You need standard dilutions of seawater to use the flame to create a calibration curve. So we want to have 125% seawater, 100% seawater, 80, 60, 40, 20, and you've got distilled water. Um, to make these standard dilutions, you want to make them in a 10 centimetre cube volume. So to make 80, 80% seawater, you would use 8 millilitres of 100% seawater and 2 millilitres of distilled water. To avoid contamination, you want to mark one of these pet tips with, to ensure that you don't use your salt, the 100% salt water one with any distilled water. In order to make 80, you will use, press, press it down to the first, first stop, and then allow it to suck up. Now to release, you push it down all the way, and it ejects the water. You do that twice. And you remove the back tip. To avoid contaminating your distilled water bottle, you would squirt some into the tube. Then using your thin mark pet tip, you have to change, change the volume to two. This is a 
flame photometer. It's set to measure sodium iron concentration. It sucks water up through this tube here, so you want to make sure that this reservoir is always full. Now, to calibrate it, we'll be using 125% seawater. Then adjust this to 125. That sets your highest parameter for sodium concentration. You then carry out the same thing with distilled water set to ensure that that is set to zero. In order to construct a calibration curve, you need to put through your standard dilutions. Now, though it's 80% seawater, it is unlikely to give 80% millivolts of reading on here. So, that's, that's why you need to construct the curve. Always make sure that the, the tube is in the water, in the solution, rather than sucking up air. Now, it's 80% and yet it reads 101. You need to record that value. For your, for your curve, you plot, plot, stand, standard dilution concentrate percentage along your x-axis and your reading from the photometer on the y. You can see the, that the flame is orange because it's picking up because the sodium ions going through it, uh, they emit luminescence, and the, the photoelectric cell in here accepts this light and converts it into volts, which is why you get your reading in millivolts. Health and safety: don't put your hand above the uh, chimney; it's quite hot. Um, so you're making a calibration curve when you put your uh, your standard sodium solutions. In there. So this is this is an imaginary calibration curve. It's not going to look like this. I'm fairly sure. Um, but you would have your standard solution, your percentage salinity. Um, where would that be? Where would that be on the X or? Yeah. Okay. Standard salin. Your standards on the X, and then you'd have the equivalent luminescence on the Y. Uh, luminescence is in milli millivolts. Um, and to use the calibration curve you would take for example a crab extracellular fluid and you put it into the flame photometer and you would uh, note down the luminescent value which you get here and you go to wherever that was for example if it was there, move across and with using a ruler find the place where it crosses the graph, go down and find its matching value on the x axis. And that's how you'd find the um, salinity of all the samples. But afterwards you have your pro forma which is here. Um, for the first table you have your calibration data which is all the values that you will have plotted on your uh, calibration curve in a table. Uh, the luminescence values. Uh, for table 2 uh, for table is the relationship between the tank water concentrations and the 125%, 100% and so on. And uh, the luminescence values that you get for each extracellular fluid. Uh, uh, for example, the flounder, flounder it, within in the 125, you put the luminescence value that you get yeah. from the from flame the photometer. And uh, table 3 is the relationship between the water concentration um, as the percentage of seawater and the extracellular fluid concentration that you will have used your calibration curve 
take the luminescence and find the uh, salinity. Remember not to use the luminescence value because you're trying to find the uh, percentage of salinity within the extracellular fluid.